to the representatives of the foreign missions, the representatives from the United Nations, Education, Scientific and Cultural Organizations, National Commission, representatives and friends from the University of the West Indies, friends and colleagues in partner NGOs, specially invited guests and supporters of the Silver Lining Foundation, members of the media, good morning and welcome again. On behalf of the members of the Silver Lining Foundation and representatives of, of our partner in this project, UNESCO, I want to welcome you and thank you for being here on this important occasion. And it's important not just for members of our foundation, but for students, parents, educators, and administrators across Trinidad and Tobago. Today, the Silver Lining Foundation and UNESCO launches the first in a series of biannual research reports on bullying and gender-based violence in secondary schools across the country. This report represents a key plank in the formation of this foundation. We were formed in 2012 following the death by suicide of 16-year-old George Kazanja, who was then a student of St. Mary's College. He took his life owing to the fear of bullying and victimization surrounding his sexual orientation. His unfortunate death, coupled with our own personal experiences with bullying and victimization, propelled us to work towards ensuring that there was a safe space and adequate resources for LGBT youth. In trying to meet those needs, we naturally targeted schools, a place where kids spend most of their waking hours, as a primary target for intervention. LGBT youth and all children should have free and fair access to a universal and what should be a guaranteed right to their education. In the early days of our work, we received many testimonies from young people who spoke of the hardships faced in schools because in most cases, someone perceived them to be gay or lesbian or because they actually were and were bullied. However, these testimonies were not enough to warrant action from the authorities. Because of society's fear of backlash, we've condoned and created a culture of homophobia that results in an action around the protection of LGBT people. So our first attempt at lobbying to get proper and holistic programs in place for all kids was met with the response that discrimination and the victimization of LGBT children does not exist because there are no reports or statistics. And I want you to understand that we as LGBT people are standing in front of authority figures and telling them that we face certain hardships and they're telling us that we don't exist and we don't matter. But that response didn't deter us. Our lead researcher, Dr. Crystal Gisawan, took charge of developing a national survey that covered the scarcity of data that we found. There are virtually no statistics on bullying and its types and forms. Thus, the data collection on the prevalence and trends of this phenomenon is warranted. It continues to be a crippling factor that we as a society do not place a high enough value on the collection of data to formulate evidence-based strategies, policies, and programs. Indeed, this shortcoming is noted in every edition of the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report that highlights our country's inefficient government bureaucracy and our de deficient data collection, which constantly affects our overall ranking on the world scale. So the importance of this type of research cannot be emphasized enough. We have heard it from various authorities that bullying is not important in the grand scheme of things. In fact, during a televised interview with members of the foundation, we were told that crime and societal violence and ailing economy and joblessness are more important than a few children fighting now this oversimplistic notion ignores the fact that our failure to address root causes of violence in childhood will lead us to having to work doubly hard to fix broken adults. We ignore that our bully and victim of today whose actions are related to horseplay or as a rite of passage that's part of the course will, if continuously left unchecked, manifest itself in adults unable to form proper social relationships with their peers problems with authority, 
abuse of recreational and in some instances harder drugs, and not to mention the many health issues that arise. We as a nation are creating a larger public health crisis in our already overburdened system. And it is also important to state that fear and violence do not belong in our nation's schools. While it may seem obvious, we as a nation are very complacent towards it. Statistics from the Inter-American Development Bank show that one in three men think it is okay to hit a woman that's unfaithful. 78% of the Caribbean region thinks that it's okay to use physical punishment as discipline on our children. And 88% of those reported to have experienced physical punishment as children swear by its efficacy and practice it on their own children. This all leads to cyclical violence. Students who have been disciplined by physical punishment think that it is okay to meet their own peer-related conflicts with aggression, and as adults, they are prone to similar inclinations. This regular cosplay, if we continue to treat it as such, manifests in the violence we see in viral videos of children engaged in oral brawls with each other, their teachers, and even the random persons outside the school environment. If we are to change any of this, it starts with rethinking the way we view discipline. Here in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, we are prone to thinking that curbing violence in any form requires repressive actions and solutions, and that anything else takes too long and is too complex. That is why we continue to see recommendations to provide more school monitors, more cameras, more guards, more suspensions, but not enough resources to examine and develop the social and emotional needs of children, no programs and counseling for young parents, and little engagement of the hundreds of graduates and undergraduates in psychology and psychiatry that our universities produce. It is time to change all of that to usher in a new paradigm. We at Silver Lightning are ready to sit with all stakeholders, the government, through the Ministry of Education, in concert with NGOs, educators, and parents, to use this data to develop and build locally grown policies and programs that protect all our children, that re engineers the way we think about discipline, and develop and promote curriculum content that, fo that fosters the social and emotional development of all the children who are our nation's primary resources. <laughs>